Have you ever opened up the back of your remote control or your kid's toy and seen those familiar little cylinders marked AA or AAA? They're everywhere. Flashlights, wireless mice, clocks, cameras, even some medical devices. But here's the strange part. We've all heard of AA and AAA batteries, but why don't we see just plain A batteries? And what about B batteries? Do they even exist? Today, we're diving into the surprisingly quirky history of battery naming, why these letters stuck, and why some letters seem to have gone missing along the way. Right here on History of Simple Things. To start, let's talk about what those letters even mean. AA and AAA aren't just random codes. They're part of a standardized system that dates back almost a century, designed to categorize batteries by their size and shape. These letters don't refer to how much power is inside, but rather the physical dimensions, height, diameter, and general form factor. Think of it like shoe sizes. The shape is always the same, but the numbers tell you how big or small they are. With batteries instead of numbers, the industry settled on letters. And as you can imagine, once people agreed on a naming system, it became really hard to change, especially once millions of devices were built around it. To understand where AA and AAA came from, we need to rewind to the early 1900s. Before there was an official naming standard, battery manufacturers were kind of doing their own thing. Different companies produced their own sizes, sometimes with unique labels or even no labels at all. This made life really confusing for consumers. Imagine buying a flashlight, only to find that no local store carried the oddly sized battery it required. By the 1940s, there was a push to create consistency. That's when organizations like the American National Standards Institute ANSI, and the International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, stepped in to introduce standard naming conventions. Batteries were sorted into categories and the simple A battery size became the starting point of the series. From there, AA was introduced as a smaller variation and AAA came in as an even smaller one. Here's the twist. A batteries do exist. They're just not as common today. The original A battery was a single cell cylindrical battery that appeared around the early 1900s. It was bigger than an AA, but smaller than some of the chunky ones we now call C or D batteries. You won't find them in your local convenience store anymore, but they're still manufactured for specific applications. In fact, A batteries are sometimes used in specialized equipment military gear, or scientific instruments. They never completely disappeared, they just never became as mainstream as AA or AAA, which ended up being the perfect fit for most household gadgets. Okay, so what about B batteries? Believe it or not, they had their moment in the spotlight too. Back in the mid 20th century, B batteries were commonly used in vacuum tube radios. These radios required different voltage sources, and one of them came from the so-called B battery. It provided the high voltage necessary to power the radio's tubes. As technology advanced and vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors, the need for B batteries faded away. And since they weren't needed in everyday consumer products anymore, they basically vanished from store shelves. That's why you don't see a little B battery hanging next to your AA and AAA packs at the supermarket. Now let's talk about why AA and AAA became the most popular. The short answer is practicality. The AA battery hit the sweet spot. It was compact enough to fit in small devices, but powerful enough to run them for a reasonable amount of time. It quickly became the standard for flashlights, radios, toys, and later on, TV remotes. Then came the AAA, introduced in the 1950s, when electronics started shrinking even further. 
portable tape recorders, slim flashlights, and eventually things like remote controls needed something smaller and lighter. Triple A batteries fit the bill perfectly. The balance of size and capacity made them ideal for low drain everyday gadgets. If A, AA, and AAA exist, then what's up with C and D batteries? These bigger cylinders were also part of the standardized system. C batteries are fatter and store more energy, making them useful for things like portable radios or toys that need a bit more juice. D batteries are even larger, built for high drain devices like big flashlights or boom boxes. Together, the Alphabet lineup gave manufacturers a range of options depending on how much space and power their products needed. But as technology continued to shrink, AA and AAA dominated, while the others slowly became less common in everyday households. So far, we've got AA, AAA, C, and D. But the Alphabet doesn't stop there. In theory, there could have been an entire lineup a, B, C, D, E, and so on. Some sizes never caught on or got discontinued. For example, there are also A8AA batteries, which are even slimmer than AAA. You've probably seen these in small gadgets like laser pointers or styluses. Then there are button cell batteries, those little coin-shaped ones used in watches or hearing aids. They don't follow the letter system at all, but they're still part of the standardized world of portable power. So the alphabet naming convention coexists with other naming styles, creating a weird mix of letters, numbers, and codes. So why don't we see A or B on store shelves today? The main reason is consumer demand. Electronics manufacturers stop designing products around those battery sizes, and without demand, stores had no reason to stock them. Once AA and AAA became the global go-to options, the other sizes got pushed into niche markets. It's a bit like VHS tapes or floppy disks. Once a newer, more practical format takes over, the older ones fade into obscurity. A and B batteries didn't disappear entirely, but they slipped out of the mainstream because they weren't as universally useful. There's another key reason why AA and AAA remained while others fell away, standardization. Once the consumer market decided that AA and AAA were the most useful, manufacturers designed more and more gadgets around those sizes. This created a feedback loop. Devices needed AA and AAA, so stores stocked more of them, which encouraged even more devices to use them. That cycle cemented AA and AAA as the default batteries for decades. Even today, in a world filled with rechargeable lithium-ion packs and built-in batteries, you can still find AA and AAA powering millions of gadgets. That's the staying power of standardization. It's also worth mentioning that the rise of rechargeable batteries changed the landscape. Nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, and now lithium ion cells have made it easier to keep using AA and AAA without constantly buying new packs. Rechargeables fit into the same standard sizes, which means you don't have to reinvent the wheel to upgrade. Meanwhile, newer devices like smartphones or laptops have moved toward custom, built-in lithium batteries, so they don't use the old alphabet naming system at all. Still, the AA and AAA holdouts prove that sometimes old standards stick around because they're just too useful to abandon. So next time you swap out a pair of AA batteries in your TV remote, you'll know the story behind those letters. What seems like just a random code is actually a snapshot of battery history, standardization, and the way technology evolves. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. 
Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.